This is Brian Tarion from the Disability Digest with my four top things that Social Security Disability recipients should not do. So I have been working with people since 2006 that have been going through the disability approval process, helping them there, and then also maximizing their benefits. So I've boiled this down to these four top things. Hopefully this will take a lot of the confusion and stress out of, well, what should I be doing or what's some of the tips? So my number one tip is this, is you're going to have a lot of free time and don't do just nothing. I uh, found that to be dangerous with people. They have too much time. They start picking up excessive habits of drinking and doing other things that are not productive and their life just kind of fades away. So it's important that you plan your next move if you don't have one already. If you're going through the disability approval process, look at your next move. And, you know, it's no different than somebody that exits the military and goes into civilian life or an athlete that retires and changes career or somebody that just plain retires. You need to find something to do and it could be as easy as volunteering or picking up the phone and helping somebody doing something every day to advance yourself, improve yourself, make yourself better. Top tip for your own well-being. Number two is for your benefits. Don't stop doctoring. 10% uh, of these cases, disability cases, get reviewed now and you want to make sure that you're staying in treatment so that your conditions are treated as best they can, which keeps your eligibility for your disability income. The next key point is don't earn over the allowed amount of money. If you do, then make sure you take the proper steps to report it, record it, and um, provide a strategy to get off your disability benefits. I've seen people that you're, you know, it's around $910 a month for 2020 that you can earn. <clears throat> they just go out and they earn a bunch of money, they don't report it, and then they get upset because Social Security wants it back. And even if you could pay it back, um, you still have a credibility issue where you haven't followed the rules and the guidelines. So be very careful about that. Working is totally fine. Most of this business is run by members that are on disability, which is great. But you just have to be aware of what the rules and the regulations are. Do not exceed them. My last tip is you do not want to be like Doris. Now, here's what I mean by that. Doris, great person, been a member here for a while. She contacted us uh, recently and said, oh, you won't believe it, finally caught up with me. She had a diabetic heart attack, went in the hospital, and had an $84,000 bill. And she had stayed on just Medicare A and B for the longest while, just totally convinced that that was fine. However, with Medicare A and B, she's responsible for 20% of that bill. And so that's like $16,000 and she's on a fixed income as disability recipients are. So it really was a financial catastrophe, catastrophe for her. She could have avoided this with a no cost plan C program that has a cap at like three to $4,000 um, and reduced that 16 down to three to 4,000. So if you're out there, <clears throat> just make sure that you're financial affairs are in line and that you are not exposed to a catastrophic event on a fixed income um, and that will help you out. So again my top four are plan your next move if you don't have one already, S keep doctoring, don't earn over the SGA, and do not be like Doris. So this has been Brian Tarian from the Disability Digest. I hope you enjoy the work that we do here. If you do, Share the video, give us a thumbs up, join us in the comments, and stay tuned for more tips from the Disability Digest. Make it a great day. Thanks again.